In this video, we'll learn about the second derivative and how we can use the second derivative test to find local extreme values for our function. The second derivative of a function is simply the derivative of the first derivative. So f double prime of x is the derivative of the derivative of f. And this indicates the rate at which the first derivative is changing. So here we see several possibilities for what a function might look like based on its first derivative and its second derivative. In the first example, if my first derivative is positive, that means my function is increasing. It's going up as I go from left to right. If the second derivative is also positive, then the slope is also increasing. So the slope here is less than the slope here because the slope is going up as I go from left to right. So not only is the function increasing, but the slope is increasing. In this example, my function is still increasing, f of prime of x is still positive, but my f double prime is negative, which means my slope is decreasing. So the slope is still positive, but it's going down as I go from left to right. Down here, f prime is negative, which means my function is decreasing. My function is going down as I go from left to right. And my second derivative is also negative, which means my slope is going down. So the slope is a negative number that's decreasing. That means it's getting further away from zero. It's going down, and so my lines are getting steeper and steeper as I go from left to right. Finally, if f prime of x is negative, again, that means my function is decreasing. But if f double prime of x is positive, that means that those negative slopes are increasing. That means they're moving up towards zero. So my tangent lines are getting less steep as I go from left to right. So the first derivative tells us about the increasing or decreasing behavior of our function. The second derivative tells us about what we call concavity. So we say that a function is concave up if f double prime of x is positive, and that a function is concave down if the second derivative is negative. The second derivative is also useful for testing for extreme values, local maximum or local minimum values. The second derivative test is easier to use than the first derivative test in many instances. So if we have a critical point where the derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive, that means my function is concave up at that point. We get a picture that looks something like this, and that tells us that we have a relative minimum at that point. Alternatively, if we have a point where the derivative is zero and the second derivative is negative, that means the function is concave down at that point. So we get a picture that looks something like this, and that tells us we have a relative maximum there. Okay, so let's take everything we know about relative extrema, the first and second derivative tests, and find all of the relative extreme values of this function. Our first step will be to find all the critical values. So we'll take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. And we'll also think about any points where that derivative might be undefined. So the derivative we get is 15x to the fourth minus 60x squared. We're gonna set that equal to zero, and also since that's a polynomial, there's not gonna be any place where that will be undefined. Solving this equation, we get three critical values, 0, 2, and negative 2. So now we'll use the second derivative test to test those three critical values. The nice thing about the second derivative test is that all we have to do is plug those critical values into our second derivative formula. We don't have to do the picking something to the left and picking something to the right thing that we have to do with the first derivative test. So first we actually need to know what our second derivative is. Recall that our first derivative was 15x to the fourth minus 60x squared. So that means our second derivative is going to be 60x cubed minus 120x. So remember we had three critical values, negative two, positive two, and zero, and we're gonna plug those all into the second derivative formula and see what we get. So here's what we get when we plug all those values into our second derivative. When we plug negative two in, we get a negative number, and that means that f has a relative maximum at x equals negative 2. When we plug positive 2 into our second derivative, we get a positive number, and that means that x has a relative minimum at x equals positive 2. And unfortunately, when we plug 0 into our second derivative, we get 0, and that gives us no information. This test doesn't tell us anything about the critical value x equals 0. We could have a max there, we could have a min, we could have neither, we just don't know. So the next thing we have to do is go back and use the good old first derivative test to test that critical value x equals zero. We don't have to test positive two and negative two because we know from the second derivative test where, whether we have maxes or mins there. But we do have to test x equals zero because the second derivative test didn't tell us anything there.
So remember how the first derivative test works. We've got to pick a number in here between negative 2 and 0, pick a number in here between 0 and positive 2, plug those values into our first derivative, and see whether the derivative is changing from positive to negative or from negative to positive at that critical value. So here I've chosen to plug in negative 1 and positive 1, and I get negative 45 for f prime of negative 1, and I also get negative 45 for f prime of 1. So that means that between negative 2 and 0, my first derivative is negative, and between 0 and 2, my first derivative is still negative. That means that I have neither a max nor a min at x equals 0. Okay, let's take everything that we've learned and put it together into a picture. So we know that the interesting numbers for this function are positive 2, negative 2, and 0. So we need to plug those into our original function to get the y values at which to plot these points. So we've plot the three points. Now we want to use the information that we gathered to figure out what to do in between the points. When we tested x equals negative 2, we found out that my function was concave down there, and that gives us a local maximum. When we tested x equals positive 2, we found that our function was concave up there, and that gave us a local minimum. What we found at x equals 0 was that the function was decreasing to the left, and still decreasing to the right. And notice that I've drawn it so that the function flattens out there, because we know that's a point where the derivative equals 0. And now all we have to do is connect the dots. We know that to the left of negative 2, my function's decreasing, and it'll do that forever. We connect these two pieces together, we connect these two pieces together, and then to the right of positive 2, my function increases forever. So that's a rough sketch of what this function looks like.